Hey friends, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I love interesting facts. And boy, do I have a great interesting fact for you today. If you don't know that about me, that means this is probably your first time here. And if that's the case, I just want to personally welcome you to the Homegrown Ministries YouTube channel. I'm DJ, and on this channel, I strive to provide you with biblical wisdom and encouragement to strengthen your walk of faith. So now on to the interesting fact. Did you know that the guy who created general anesthesia got the idea from the book of Genesis? It's a true story that's based on historical evidence, and I'll give you the evidence too, so you know that it's not just some backwoodsy guy on YouTube making up a story to make Christianity look better. So prior to the 1840s, anyone who went through surgery did so with limited to no pain relief. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had several surgeries in my life, and I couldn't imagine doing that without some form of pain relief. It'd be horrifying to go through that process and be able to feel everything or be awake through that process. So in 1847, a guy by the name of James Young Simpson was trying to find a way to reduce pain in childbirth, and he was conducting experiments on the use of chloroform to see if it could be used as an anesthetic. Now, he got the idea to put people to sleep from the book of Genesis, and he wrote an article about it, and this is how we know we have proof. I'll give a link to, this, to that article in the description below so you can read the full article yourself to fact check me, to make sure that I'm not just making this stuff up. The article is titled, Answer to the Religious Objections Advanced Against the Employment of Anesthetic Agents in Midwifery and Surgery. And in the article, James Young Simpson writes these words, Besides those that urge on a kind of religious ground that an artificial or anesthetic state of unconsciousness should not be induced merely to save frail humanity from the miseries and tortures of bodily pain, forget that we have the greatest of all examples set before us for following out this very principle of practice. I allude to that most singular description of the preliminaries and details of the first surgical operation ever performed on man, which is contained in Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. In this remarkable verse, the whole process of a surgical operation is briefly detailed, but the passage is principally striking as affording evidence of our Creator Himself using means to save poor human nature from the unnecessary endurance of physical pain. How cool is that? For thousands of years, we've been performing surgery without pain relief. Yet the very first surgery ever performed on man was done so by God Himself. And what did He do? He put Adam to sleep. And so when James Young Simpson reads these words in Genesis, a light bulb goes off and says, hey, why don't we do that too? If it was good enough for God, it should be good enough for us. And so the evidence is there in that article. Again, link in the description below. Read it yourself. It's really cool that he got the idea from the book of Genesis. So time and time again, the Bible is proven to be true because for thousands of years, we've had this text and the text said, hey, God put Adam to sleep before he removed his rib from him. And yet we hadn't been doing it that way. We're like, oh, we have to do surgery. We'll do it while you're awake. Here's some alcohol. Hope you don't feel anything. But God did it the right way. He set the example for us. And if you just read the text, you can see these things. It's so cool to me. It's so inspiring. So that's your interesting fact for the day. So moving through Genesis chapter 2, today we're looking at verses 4 through 25. Again, I'm not going to read those verses to you, so please take some time out of your day to read them yourself. But this story covers the creation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. One of the other really cool scientific facts that we find in chapter 2 is that it says God created us from the dust of the earth. And recently, scientific studies have found out that 97% of the atoms that we are made from are the same atoms found in the center of the galaxy. So truthfully, we are made of dust. And we're just finding this out through science now, but the Bible has been telling us this for thousands and thousands of years. And again, time and time again, the Bible has proven true. And it's so cool to me that there are things that we don't even realize are in here that are true. We just read them and miss them. And yet, when we perform the science or we try something, we find out that, hey, the Bible already said that. It's true. It is true. So that's so cool to me. Now, in this section, God does create the Garden of Eden. And I believe there's nothing in the Bible that, that states this. I just believe this is a DJism. It's a personal belief. But my belief is that heaven is a lot like the Garden of Eden. And when the new heaven and the new earth are created when Jesus returns, I believe that we'll be able to be 
either in the Garden of Eden or around the Garden of Eden or have access to it. I think it'll be open back up to us. Now, it's interesting to note that Adam worked in the garden. So when you ask what we're going to do in heaven, again, if you're using this analogy, I believe that there will be work to do in heaven. It won't be painful or tiring, but it will be enjoyable work that we can do um, in God's creation. Now, in addition, the other thing that's, that I want you to note is that we lived with the animals without harm. It says every animal came to Adam and, and none of them harmed him. And he didn't harm any of them, nor did he eat any of them. I actually did a um, video on veganism and Christianity a long time ago. And what you find out when you do the research is that God created us not to eat meat. He actually doesn't sanction humans to eat meat until Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, after the flood. And there it says... This is God speaking to Noah. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. And again, that comes from Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. But for the first eight chapters of the book of Genesis, man was a vegetarian, I would assume, based on what we're seeing here, because God doesn't tell them to eat meat until after the flood. So I also think that's an interesting thing to point out. And when we get in heaven and or when the new heaven and the new earth come and we are with God, I still think we'll have the ability to eat and we'll be able to eat from, from the garden. But I don't think we'll be eating meat anymore. So for you meat lovers out there, sorry, that'll change. I don't think you'll miss it, but that is something that uh, I think will change. Again, I don't have biblical justification for that. It's just something that I think might be true. So if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. Now, in the Garden of Eden, there are two trees that we find out about, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And originally, we were created to live forever. We don't end up having um, pain and suffering and death until after the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, which we'll see in the next episode. But in the original form and in creation, we were created to live forever. And the only tree we were forbidden from eating from was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And unfortunately, that's the tree that Adam and Eve decide to eat from, which brings sin into the world. And again, we'll see that in the next episode. So hang on to your hats for that. The other thing we see here is that God tells Adam that it's not good for him to be alone. And at this point, he creates Eve from a rib from his side. And we already talked a little bit about that with my interesting fact of the day. But in addition, this is where God sets up the covenant of marriage. And I told you that through this series of Genesis, I'm going to point to the New Testament anytime I can. And Jesus talks about this verse in the New Testament. So when he's questioned about divorce, he says in Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6, Haven't you read... Jesus replied that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother to be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Jesus pointed to this passage to reinforce the fact that marriage is ordained by God and that marriage is established between one man and one woman. And that's how it should be. That is the way in which creation was established. And so I think that's so cool because we see God in creation setting up how he wants the world to work before sin is introduced into the world. He sets it up perfect. He says it's good. And then we have a fall of man that again we'll see in Genesis chapter 3 which will be the next episode. And then we get all the way until the New Testament before we can even have an option to be fully, truly, 100% redeemed. And time and time again, Jesus will point to the Old Testament to tell us how God established the human race and how he wanted us to live. Because he points to that as the example. And this is a great example of, of Jesus pointing to the Old Testament to tell us how God intended creation to work. And I think that's so cool. So guys, this ends today's Bible study of the uh, chapter 2 of Genesis. If there's something that you thought was really cool, let me know in the comments below. Also, if there's something you thought that I missed or something you disagree with, Mon, I'd love to hear from you, so just let me know in the comments below. And Christian friends, please continue to be the salt of the earth, be the light to the world, and go encourage somebody else today because the world desperately, desperately needs it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.